Good morning. Good morning and welcome. Welcome from our Pinhole Quilting Showroom. We are live. We are live. We are live and kicking. Pete and I, uh, we are back in Pershaw and we are glad to be home. It's just lovely to be back in England. And thank you very much for all your orders while we've been away. I've just had a quick look over at our glide display. It is devastated. It is devastated. So thank you for everybody who placed orders while we were away. Our fifth anniversary sale was very successful. I can judge by the fact that so many of our glide thread has been sold. 5,000 meters and 1,000 meters. Devastated. So we're placing an order. It should be here um, next week. So thank you very much for that. But we will be restocking and we are very glad to see so many of you quilting, clearly. Oh, I'll put it over here. My mug of coffee, definitely necessary. Um, actually, we slept very well, I think. Um, and Pete, both Pete and I, we had a, a good night's sleep adjusting to the new time zone. It's not too bad, actually. It's only like flying from East Coast states, so it's not too bad. Anyway, we had a lovely time away, but we are very glad to be home. And it was nice to see a bit of sunshine and double digit figures in Celsius is always welcome when we come home. Um, I'm glad it wasn't minus figures. <laughs> that would have been a bit of a shock to the system. Anyway, it's lovely to walk back in our showroom and see all these lovely long arms, including some of the vintage long arms. That was just, I was just so happy to be home actually. I walked in, these are beautiful machines here, all ready to play on, all ready to set up, because we left it here so that while we were away, um, any demonstrations could take place. And uh, it was all nice and tidy, all ready to go, all ready for those workshops in March. We look forward to seeing our new customers ready for those workshops in March. There's a few places left. So if you haven't already booked and taken up on your free workshop space and you're a new customer, there are some spaces left and just have to enter your code, your discount code, so that you can take advantage of your training. And we look forward to seeing you and getting you kick-started on your long arm journey. It's a really important component of that journey. And, you know, with all of the COVID stuff and everything that's been taking place, we've been keeping track of those figures. You know, while we were away, we were in a bit of a hot spot. Although when we were on our little island, our little Cayman, um, we were fairly isolated on an island with only about, I don't know, a total of about 250 people. So we were not in a hot spot. And I don't think the stingrays actually carry COVID, so we were pretty safe. And um, so we were okay, but they, they do have a bit, of a bit of a problem with COVID over there. So we were glad to come home where it's all just kind of, it's going away, so it's fine. I'm only saying that. But actually, when we do our workshops in March, we're really looking forward to seeing everybody. And Pete's just kind of, are you okay there, Pete? Are we live? We're live, yes. We've got a lot of our <clears throat> usual suspects online. <laughs> Um, Good. Yeah, I'm Lindsay. Glad we're live. So, Lindsay, yes, I am here behind the camera. Um, you sound not, a bit husky, Pete. <clears throat> I haven't had a, haven't had my third coffee yet this morning. So. Yes, that is third coffee. So, um, he takes it. He does. It's a little kickstart. He needs a kickstart. Got a bit of a tan, which is nice. Yeah, he always tans much better than me. Feeling a bit cold here. Rested. Well, once the once the jet lag is over, then I'm sure we'll feel rested. Yes. Well, listen, nice to hear from you, Lindsay, and thanks for your comments while, while we were away. It was um, so nice to hear from, uh, from some of you while we were away. And it's, uh, it's great just to have that distance. You know, sometimes we benefit from a little distance. When you're running a business, it's always good to have a little time out to reflect. And the same thing is true of any creative pursuits. We, um, I just did a blog post and I put a link on the email newsletter that we need space in our homes, space in our life and space in our heads. Because when we don't have all of those things, it's hard to pursue creative pursuits. And it came out of this lovely conversation we had in Houston in 2019, when Pete and I had the opportunity to meet Bill and Weeks Ringle. And if you haven't seen any of their work in the modern quilt studio, um, Pete and I met them for the first time. Well, Pete met them for the first time, but I've actually been following Bill and Weeks Ringle for quite some time because my brother and I had met them, well, with, the, with my parents, but my brother has been a big fan of theirs for quite some time. He's been into modern quilting 
for quite a long time. Nick, my brother who runs along with my other brother, the Cotton Patch, Nick is originally a graphic artist. So he's very much into graphic design, graphic art and everything. And he loved uh, talking to Bill in particular. And we met them way, way back in the 1990s, I think it was. And they spent a lot of time in Japan and loved the simplicity and, and line of design and the sort of the way that they approach design and art. So we had the opportunity because it wasn't particularly busy when we spoke to them, just to take some time out and speak to them. And I met with Weeks and discussed with them why people don't finish and complete projects. And she has a Facebook group about that. So definitely check them out. If you're rather like me, a non-completed finisher on your quilt projects, I obviously are quite busy, can be quite busy from time to time. And I love finishing things, absolutely love finishing things. But you know, sometimes if you don't complete projects, you tend to dwell on that and not then start new projects. And, you know, this is something that, that, that Weeks has actually considered as to why that is and therefore why you don't then start new projects. And, you know, that tends to mither on you and you don't, then don't open up to new creative pursuits can be a bit of a problem for you. So that means that you then don't pursue new things and it just, you get stymied. So we don't want that. We like to help you to keep going and learning. And for our handy quilter owners, this is the kind of thing that we want to help you. So definitely check out their, their Facebook page and also their website. We, we think that they're a very interesting couple. Well, they are a very interesting couple. They're very, very interesting people. Anyway, we will we will move on to other things, uh, but there's other things on the blog post that I, I you know want to share with you. Particularly if you're in, if you're looking at long arm quilting and you're thinking about where you're going to put it, uh, we've got some examples there of some of the beautiful, beautiful locations that we've seen. Just a few examples. We see a lot more, obviously. There's, we've, we're very blessed to have a lot of handy quilter owners here in the UK who've got some beautiful locations for their long arms. Anyway, here we have in front of me a 12 foot Studio 2 frame. It's called the Studio 2 frame just because it's, it's, that's the name of our handy quilter frame that we put our Amara on. It was what the Avanti went on, and we can also put the Simply machine on and at the moment I've got a backing fabric on it and I had some demo fabric on it onto which I had done some pro stitcher work over Christmas and I just wanted to show you can you just zoom in on this isn't this this was on I something I did at Christmas just a demo isn't this the cutest little thing I just wanted to do and I think for next Christmas 2022 I think this would be brilliant as a flip and as a table runner. Isn't that so cute? The reindeer. I just thought it was so cute. It was cute. Cute as a button. That's very American, but I couldn't help say it. So, so sweet. So before I wind it on, I wanted to show you that's the kind of thing you can do on Pro Stitcher. And when I do the demos and things, I show how we skew to fit and crop and all that kind of thing. I've also got dumpsters and cement trucks. And now with Pete's grandson, Patrick, there's gonna, I see a cement truck, a dumpster and fire truck in his future. He doesn't so that, know it yet. That leads me on, Liz, you're talking there about Pro Stitcher to Pro Stitcher Lite because somebody's ah, asked about Pro Stitcher Lite. Very good Any question. Any more news about Pro Stitcher Lite? Yeah. Do you want to talk about Pro Stitcher Lite? Uh, well, yes, we're expect. We're not quite sure when, but this month we will definitely be getting our demonstration yeah. version of Pro Stitcher Lite. It's imminent, Pete. Right. Well, as soon as it's here and as soon as we we're put back. it set up, the yep. very next Saturday Live, I'm sure we will focus on Pro Stitcher Lite and we will yes. talk to you about the options and which frames it works with, which mach machines it works with and what the pricing is. Absolutely. Yeah, it's going to be very exciting because, you know, we've had the Pro Stitcher, which is a fantastic program. And I'm just delighted the way that Handy Quilter has invested in the development of this amazing computerized package. So the computerized package that works with 
and simply Avanti, um, uh, the uh, Amara, Forte, and the Infinity will soon be available for our Moxie. And on certain frames with a different carriage, it'll be available for the Simply 16 customers. It'll need to be have an adapted carriage for use on the uh, little foot frame, but it'll work on the loft frame for Simply and Moxie owners. And it'll be a lower price point. It'll have a slightly different uh, tablet and it'll have a small number of designs, but in essence, much of the functionality will be the same. It won't ship with the uh, design package. Uh, most of our Pro Stitcher Lite users, we don't think will be using the designer package, but you can always optionally purchase it afterwards anyway. And you can buy designs online, download them and stitch them out too. So there's lots and lots of things that you'll be able to do with Pro Stitcher Lite. And I'm really looking forward, if I'm hoping that I'll get over to the Salt Lake City Academy for retailers later this year, in which case I'll be able to do the education and I'm, I, my aim is to be able to uh, show you some of the things that I've learned later this year. Fingers crossed that I can do that. So Pro Stitcher Lite, very excited about that. I always get very excited about computer stuff because um, as an ex-IBM systems engineer, anything to do with computers gets me stupid excited and um, I start getting, yeah, slightly out of control. But that's just me. Okay, um, now the other things I wanted to point out to you, we have got the, we're out of stock at the moment, but on the Studio 2 frame, we did install the center marking tape. So this is for when you're installing your quilt backing and then you put your quilt top on, you would mark the center of your quilt top when you put it on. In fact, if I just wind this back, actually, actually. <clears throat> so this measures out this from back. the center. So here's your zero center mark here, yeah. and it goes inches either direction from there. Yeah, so if this was, if I had my quilt top, when I load my quilt top here, this I would have marked the center of my quilt top just here, and I would have marked it here so that that was centered. And then I would have had the edge of my quilt top exactly at the 21 here. You can see I didn't center it because it's 21 here and it's 22 over here. Did not center. So this would be perfectly lined 21 over here and 21 over there. Lizzie did not do this perfectly. But that's what you would do if you were using the center marking. So okay. as you progress, you would check throughout the quilt that you have got it perfectly centered. Now there are some, there's some really good instructions on Kimi Bruner's site of how you square and keep square and also on Jamie Wallen's site on how you keep square, um, how you keep a quilt top square. And you need to do things like, I mean, if it's your own quilt top, of course it's gonna be perfect, of course it is. And you're going to do things like when you attach the borders, you're going to use the lengthwise grain to attach. And you're always going to measure your quilt top <clears> before <throat> you attach the borders at at least three points. And of course, you're going to do all, these, all of these things are what you will do as standard practice. And you're going to measure your quilt top and only attach the borders precisely to the quilt top at those three points at the minimum width. Everything that you do will be absolutely precise, bang on, T-square accuracy. Um, but if you don't happen to have your quilt top, you've got, you've got a friend. Okay, let's assume it's your friend, your best friend, who's not quite as good as you are. And you put it on the quilt frame and you find that it's not as bang accurate as you, that can happen. You might need to ease it in. And there are videos online where you can find out how to use techniques that enable you to ease it in. A center marking tape will help, but you still need to have those techniques of easing in film fullness. Now, Kelly Klein has got, I've been watching some of these videos, by the way, recently on our holiday. This is how I spend my time on my holiday. And uh, starch is very useful. A baked bean can, no, not baked beans. But, I mean, you can use baked beans, but also water bottles can help it ease in fullness. So those are the kind of things that you will find useful. 
But a centre marking tape is very useful because as you progress down the quilt, you can make sure it's not going off at an angle and off at an angle. And we also recommend that if you're using prey stitcher, that you use a point in the centre for doing drag and drop. And there are alternatives to doing drag and drop, which uh, you can also watch on YouTube. There we go. Uh, that's part of my little tips and techniques for today. But I want to, more to the point, show you about Little and Large, which was the subject of my email newsletter. So just moving on now. Oh, something's fallen off. So Little and Large, what did I mean by Little and Large? Little and Large is all about when people come for demos here, they say, what? Well, it's a very big frame. And in fact, one of our lovely customers who's about to have, Jeanette, who's about to have her frame installed, we've got to find a date, it asked me the question, she's asked the question, 10 or 12 foot? Husband's saying, get, get as big, we can fit the 12 foot in. Should I have the 10 foot, she said. And I mean, we, we normally say go as big as, don't we really? We do. We do. Because you can always go smaller. And that's absolutely right. So at the, for the sideways tension, we have these sideways tensioners, which you can put on. And we say attach those to the backing, don't stretch it. You, there are alternative things you can do. You can actually pin other things to the side so it stretches more evenly. Like a, you can put a, a piece of painters, uh, a paint stick inside, uh, inside a cloth leader and then attach this to the cloth leader. We do talk about that on the foundation workshop. But the other thing is that if you've got a small, if you've got a small number of pieces of quilting to quilt, you can put a piece of backing fabric on. Well, say you'd got a number of quilt tops to do. Say you've got a lot of baby quilts that you wanted to do and you didn't want to put a whole load of small quilt tops on, uh, quilt backings on. You could just do a wide piece and then lay on lots of small pieces. So here you go. An example. So say I've got a number of quilt cushion tops and I could lay these on side by side. So I could have two, three, four of these across, or I could even have a whole load of mug mats or coasters on a backing fabric, whatever, you know, could have, these could be mug mats, couldn't they? And I would just get my wadding to the appropriate size and I would lay that on first. So get your, your wadding. And you could get that, this is, we do this now, 24 by 22, someone's very kindly written on the size, so I know it's the right size. When I pick it up, that saves so much hassle. This is a very, very old cushion piece that I found. Right, and then I would baste down, take off the gears. So on the electro, on the um, pro stitcher, the de default is to have the gears locked and electronically I can just disengage the gears. But what I might do, so I can just move it around, um, but what I might do is either do a wiggly line to baste it or baste it with a straight line. So then I can make sure it's basted square. And because that might be useful because I might want to, in fact, it would be very useful, wouldn't it? Because I might want to do a completely square. Actually, I wouldn't want to do that fact because what I would want to do is use a mark to do. Oh, I'm just thinking ahead here. Always thinking. I'd probably do a little wiggly line just to base this in place. <clears throat> so check in here, I would check my stitches per inch, 11 stitches per inch on my pro stitcher. I haven't done a test stitch, I don't It's all res risky on Facebook Live, isn't it? That's okay. Right, so I'll go down to six. Just a 
So it doesn't really matter because I'm actually going to use what's called mark on here to do all my straight lines. You might think, well, why wouldn't you just do a straight channel lock or something like that? And then all of your straight lines would be channel locked. But actually, I don't know that these straight lines are perfectly straight. So I'm just going to base it in place. Because on both sitter, I can basically skew to fit everything. Oh, I do want to leave him there. Can I do the very end? So I'm just going to wind it on. I should be able to do the very end. I would normally do a little down. Let me just change that. And a mark. Just changing it to needle down position. just need to move it slightly back so I've got it all basted get one final bit yeah. Mary I think the only reason that the, Liz is using the glide foot is that the glide foot is used really all the time with the pro okay. stitcher yeah and it was the it was the foot that was on there at the time she it does actually help though if Liz is doing the basting, oh, on, the and basting off, yeah. on and off the edges because it Definitely. means that the foot doesn't get caught under the under the quilt top. For the basting, that is the best foot to use. Definitely. So that's nicely basted now. And I could I could if I wish just do some big basting through the centre just to hold it. Because what I don't want to do is end up with a puffy centre. So I would I would potentially just do some big basting stitches through. But that's held it now. And I'd be happy with that. So that's how you'd baste a small piece. And if I had loads of these from, you know, if I had five or six right the way across a wide piece of fabric, that would be a really efficient way of using a wide, extra wide piece of, of fabric that I would do a whole load of cushions that I wanted to do, say, for Christmas or something for people. And I could also, if I, I mean, I did, um, whole, I did six uh, table mats for my friend, for, um, for her flat. And I use Pro Stitcher and I actually use the square foot to do all the binding on the frame. So I did all of the binding and then just top stitched the other side as well. So that was done all on the frame. There we go. So doing a small piece like this, or as I say, doing mug mats or um, anything like that, you can do it just by having that in place. Now the alternative, which we're going to go and have a look at now, is say you just wanted to do one. Okay, let's have a look at that. So we're going to go over here. Just if, you, if I walk around here this way, are you going to walk with me? Are you going to walk through the middle? I have to go around the edge, not enough space there. Okay. So this is the blue pizza. This is one I did earlier. I've used this sample before. This is one of my, will I ever finish it? Will I ever finish it? Not sure. Um, this is from Salt Lake City, 20 something. And this was on Pro Stitcher class with Kelly Klein. It's a vintage handkerchief on a uh, sateen. And so we basted the silk handker the, uh, the handkerchief onto the sateen on the Pro Stitcher and then we did a technique with Kelly where we actually did this angled design using Pro Stitcher. 
So this was basted just in the same way as I've just shown you onto a piece of backing fabric. So just the same, but then I brought it home. So now I wanted to use it again to do the feathers on my Amara. Now I've got this whole thing all basted and ready to go. So I thought I'm, I've got it on and off the frame. So what I've done is I've taken it to my sewing machine and I've just stitched it in place onto some scrap bits of cloth leader and I've pinned it onto this leader and I can just take it whenever I want and pin it onto, onto a cloth leader, onto any of these machines and finally finish it off. But I probably never will because I'm now using it as a sample to show people that this is how you could finish it off at any time and pin it as a single piece onto any frame. So that's how you could do it. You could just use your scrap cloth leader, maybe from when, when we do our installations, we give you a sample piece of fabric. You could cut that sample up after you've quilted it to death and use it as a cloth leader and, ha and just, a, just sew a line onto your single piece like that. So hopefully that shows you a couple of alternatives. Either use a single piece of backing fabric and then lay on your individual pieces in place with wadding and then your top fabric and baste it in place using a five, five stitches per inch, six stitches per inch or whatever you like, or put a piece of backing uh, of basted fabric, uh, based, based on, I'm sorry, to a cloth leader and then pin it onto your cloth leader that's attached to your frame. Okay. If you've got the little foot frame, you could just clamp that in place instead of pin it. That would go round. This is the reason that it's got three layers um, is because that would then be suitable. I did it so I could actually put it onto a little foot frame as well. It's thick enough. It won't slip. Okay. So it, it doubles for me for both. I use this as a sample so I could show somebody also how I would use it for Pro Stitcher too, to sort of align it. It's a multi-purpose sample for me. I have to think of many different ways of using these things. Might be best never to finish it then. I, that's what I just said. I don't think I'll ever, ever start <clears throat> finish it. It's just multi-purpose, multi, multi, multi-purpose. So when I tighten it up now, I just want to show you that's how I tightened it up. There we are, ready to go. Yeah. So the other thing I wanted to show you is that when I stitched this, which is a border, right? So this is done as a border design. I pin this bit back so that the stitch goes all the way. You can see this design here at the bottom, oh, yes. can you? Yeah. So when it comes back, that's actually stitched. You can see there, it's stitched all the way to the edge. So I will do two more pins there to hold that back. So Pro Stitcher will stitch all the way to the edge. And then when that's unfolded, it'll be perfect. Okay. Just to show you, that's how that's done. <clears throat> because that lace doesn't want to be stitched down. Question. Not permanent anyway. Question from Sue Such. If you did the binding on the long arm, presumably using the square foot, Sue, yeah. she says, how do you close the binding if you do it on the long arm? How do you close it? How do you finish it off? Yeah. You have to finish it off separately on a, on a sewing machine. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You can only do one side. Okay. Yeah. And the, uh, the way that you do the edges to mitre it is just the same as on the sewing machine. Yeah. Across. yeah. And when you trim it, Sue, you will only once will you ever trim on your rotary cutting board, that mitered corner, you'll only ever trim the little bit, the little ear once wrongly. Well, you might do it twice if you, I've only done it once, even I've only ever done it once, whoops, sorry. And another question to do with large quilts. This, this isn't one that you, I don't think, thought of. Okay. Liz for this morning, but it's a, it's a good question. Okay. How can you do a larger quilt if you only have, let's say, an eight foot frame? Yeah, well, you see, Nancy Christopherson says that she has done a quilt that would fit on a 12 foot frame on a five foot frame. 
And the technique is? The technique? I'd have to tell you, I'd have to kill you. <laughs> no, I don't know. She, she, never, she never revealed the technique. I was, she was going to tell me when I went to Dallas, but I never got, I never got to that point. I mean, it's not, it's not that straightforward, is it? So, no, no, she said that. It's not straightforward. It's about managing the bulk. You can okay. only do it in sections, really. Can't yeah, yeah. You it's... have to do it in, a, in half, for instance, and do the two and then fit them together. Yeah. Which is why we tend to recommend that people go for the largest frame that they can fit That's in right. their room. It, it is about managing the bulk. And um, it's about being very, very careful. And it's a faff. So, yeah. She, she claimed that she, she, had, she has done it, she's, but she's a very skillful quilter. Yeah, and indeed, and indeed Sharon says that she quilted a large quilt in two halves and then joined afterwards in a quilting, quilt as you go type way. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And Marty Michelle would have done the same thing without, you know, without having a frame. And in her book, Machine Quilting in Sections, she, has, she goes through all those different techniques. Okay, so that's on frames. Um, the other thing I just wanted to mention was that um, a number of people also ask questions. What if I've already basted my quilt before I get my quilt frame? Um, and it's in, it's in that sort of pre-base, that's in that basted set, uh, way, and I want to put it onto the four, the four rail frame. <clears throat> what should I do? My recommendation is that you unbaste it. <laughs> If you haven't started quilting it, take it apart. It takes relatively a short amount of time to what we call skin it. Um, and the best way of doing it is to actually take the layers, like go between the wadding and the backing, because um, it's better to do it between the wadding and the backing than between the quilt top and the backing, and to skin it. Um, and there's a few different techniques. And if you come on long on learning curve, if you're a handy quilter owner, and if you look up and search how to skin a quilt or uh, taking apart a quilt, whatever, or even just to ask a question um, will help you on that. But, and there's some very, very skillful, experienced quilters who will tell you how to do that. It is better to take it apart and put the individual components of your quilt, the backing and the quilt top, with the wadding separately than it is to try and put a basted quilt onto two rails promise. Okay, let's look at the sit down stationary machine. So we had Jackie Parkinson come in the showroom just before we went away, which was lovely. And we mentioned about Jackie's exhibitions, uh, the exhibition that's going around the cathedrals of England, which is fantastic. And we were delighted to see Jackie and her husband again, because they'd come, uh, we still, we'd, um, spoken to them before their quilts uh, from, of, of Revelation, and now it's Quilts from Creation, which is going around in 2022 and 2023. Now, Jackie quilts on a Sweet 16, which is two inches less throat space than our Capri that we've got here. This is the newest uh, sit-down stationary machine from Handy Quilter, which is a very fast machine. Uh, it's an 18 inch throat space and it's, uh, is it 2200? Yes. Yeah, 2200 stitches per minute, which is wonderful because it is fast. It is completely, you have the option of having manual, but actually it has two magic eyes, which you can see are built into the table. So the inbuilt stitch regulation really makes it incredibly intuitive machine. And I absolutely love it. I've, uh, I've really fallen in love with the Capri. Uh, it is so intuitive, and I know that a number of our customers who've had it have, have absolutely loved it. The, the thing about the, the sit-down machines is, of course, that you, know, you kind of go, well, how do I do a big quilt? But the most important thing is, is that you've got this a huge amount of space, and you, I am a shover, not a roller. So what you do is you shove the excess fabric underneath the free arm. This is a quilt I did many years ago. Now, I didn't do it on a sit-down or a handy quilt, so I did this all on a Benina um, sit, uh, conventional domestic machine with a, uh, with a walking foot, and which is why there is only uh, a cable border, which I did using a tear-away. And I don't intend to do it uh, using a long arm. I think it's nice that I've still got 
a quilt that I only quilted on a domestic machine. And this is a, a quilt that is from a book by Marianne Fons and Liz Porter, based on very much reproduction fabrics from the 1870s, 1880s, in poison green, bubblegum pink. Smithsonian fabric reproduction, PMB re reproduction. I love this quilt. Anyway, I digress. <clears throat> Question from Derek. Yeah. <clears throat> Morning, Derek. Morning, Derek. Hi, Sandra. If you have a pre-basted quilt, could you just attach it to the top leader and then clamp it to the backing bar? You were talking about taking yeah, it yeah, apart. Yeah, yeah, Abso yeah. Absolutely, you could. Absolutely, you could, Derek. And that, that is what you would do as the alternative. But the problem is, is you've got the three layers that are going around effectively yeah, yeah, you're you're just floating it, really. You are just floating it, but it's. I've got to be honest. It's just never as good. In my opinion, it's just it's never. Oh, it depends how well you've basted it. If you've basted it really well, fine. What you can do, Derek, is in that situation is as you progress through the quilt, is for each block take each block individually and check that it's under your needle, what you're working on is really good, but you can't see the back. And yes, Sharon, the, your foot would catch potentially on the basting thread, but you would take out the basting thread as you went along to prevent that happening. Yeah, and that's the, that's the other thing is how have you basted it? And that's a really good point, Sharon, is that if you basted it with thread, number one, it can, it can catch on that. And number two, your, your threads that you're now stitching with can unfortunately catch that thread if you leave it in and make it really difficult to take out. Um, oh, the other thing is, I mean, you know how many people, every now and then we get people who've left pins in. Don't do it. We've had a few of those. People. It's good for the retiming business, but it's not, not recommended. Recommended. Um, so, Carol, the clamps the clamps will work in that fashion on the front bar, because they're they're designed for the little foot frame, which is exactly the way that they're intended to be used on a pre-basted piece. So yeah. they do work. Okay. Here's the, here's the tips. Here are the tips. All right. This is an extra table. Okay. Now we have got, by the way. We've got a special offer on the extra table. I'll tell you about that in a second. Most important thing is that the area you are working on at any one time, that's all, you're, that's all you care about, okay? What you don't want, right, say I'm working on this uh, black and white block here. What you don't want is this. You don't want the drag here. This is not good, okay? I don't want stuff down here. What Debbie Brown recommends is having a laminated cushion here to reduce the drag down here. You need this. You need it to be like this. You absolutely do not want that to be down here because this is where you get problems. So you fold it up like this, put your arm, oh, I found a tag. I just found a tag. Can you believe that? Yes. I have taken every tag out of this. Unbelievable. And then every other bit of this quilt has to be up here. You do not want it dropping down at all. It's got to be up. You've really got to get it up like this. Now you can work on it. The most important thing is that this, all the rest of this is up. And now it's ever so slippy. It's fantastic. This, so, like that. Another question for you, Liz. Okay. From Claire Shortland. What are, can she use Claire. wash away thread for her basting and then simply yes. get rid of it at the end? Perfect. Yes. We do have some in stock. We do. Great idea, Claire. Oh, wash aways. I mean, wash away is great for also for Trapunto as well, aka the style of Harry Warner. Brilliant technique, by the way. 
if you like trapunto. So, I mean, I like these, but for a big quilt like this, I would use the bigger ones, the paddles. Comes out. Because this really keeps it flat, like this. You see how much better that is than the small ones. The small ones are good for a domestic, but when you've got a big quilt like this, this keeps it consistent. You see how much better that is. And it, it helps keep your, your, your hands almost act together so much better. Now, I would say for a quilt this size, two tables. So the deal is we've got 10% off the tables on both the old style table, the one was, that was for the Sweet 16. We've also got 10% off this month, right? Till the end of February, yes. 28th of February. We've also got 10% off the tables on the new Insight table. So these are side extensions, they're 18 inches wide. You can yep. put them on either side or both sides. Fantastic. Okay, and the final thing um, we wanted to talk about is we've got some great deals on the Cindy Needham stencils. We've got 10% off the Cindy Needham stencils throughout February, and we've got 10% off her books. This one so, just here, Liz. Yep. I'm just going to grab, oh yeah, 10% off. <clears throat> so it's the borders, 10% off borders, 10% off Cindy's ultimate stencil handbook, 10% off the design book, and... Ah, Claire, I don't know the answer to that. Can you get pre-wound washable bobbins, Liz? Say again? Can you get um, wash-away thread on pre-wound bobbins? Um, I... I... Claire, I'll have a look at... Um, don't know. See if they're available. I can't remember seeing them. I don't know. I'm not sure. I mean, if not, you can, you can wind your own, of course. Yep. Um, there's the backgrounds, there are, yeah, there's the ultimate shape, backgrounds, of course there's the ult original <coughs> ultimate, I need to, I think I need a bit of a sort out of my stencils, they're not in a very good order, ultimate oval, which you can download the um, handbook, and yeah. I need a bit of a sort out of this. Uh, there's some examples here. So the wash away thread that we have, which is from the Glide range, is called Perish. It's called Perish Natural, and we have it in spools. I think there are 1,000 meter spools. Yeah. And in fact, 500 yards. This was just my play piece, but just to give you an example. So that's the ultimate stencil, um, which was the circle one. That's an example of one I did. Um, this is one example that I was just playing with, which is not very good, but it just shows you, you've got to start somewhere. Um, this is the border cable, again, just shows you've got to say it, start somewhere. And some examples of some of the backgrounds. These, again, they're just play, play, play. So really, really good stencils, Cindy stencils, and you can use them with the uh, Bohin pencils. I keep going wandering over here. <laughs> Bear with me a moment. Time's gone by, Pete. I can't believe it. That's the Bohin chalk marker that we recommend because it's really fine. So this is a fine chalk marker. The tip of this is less than a millimeter. There's some black right. fabric just over there. Could you pass that? Be funny if the camera just suddenly went. Mm. Well, not funny. Funny, not funny. Right. So yeah, this is the one that's really, really fine. So when it comes to marking through these, you can either use pounce, or you can see how fine that is. It's beautiful. You can sharpen this to a very fine point, but you can see this is this is more for a thicker line. It does work, but. You have to pop. It comes with a sharpener. And the other thing we want to mention was that we, while we were away, we put together the mermaid pack, which is beautiful. And you get the same discount that you get in the Glide Thread Club. 
So I thought I'd just get out for you and show you. Oops. So Lorraine, I'm glad you like the booklets. They are very well produced. It's certainly the case. Oh, and, a, and a very good tip from Marianne. Oh yeah? Here, Marianne Tenkata. If you do use washable thread or bobbins, keep them in a sealed plastic bag so that the thread doesn't absorb moisture from the air. That's really good. Ask me how I know, yeah. she says. Yeah, and don't lick the tip to try and thread the needle. Another tip. No, that doesn't really work. <laughs> there you go. Ask me how I know. No, I, only, I didn't do that. Okay. Uh, so yes, those chalk pencils, have you ever used silver pencils? Somebody's asking. Yeah, I have. Absolutely. No, there's some really good ones. I mean, we don't sell them, but um, yeah, the Roxanne ones are very good. The white and silver. Yeah. Great. So here's our mermaid collection. Two, four, six, go. eight. There's one Memories more. of Caribbean. Yeah. Mm. There we are. Aww. Anyway, let's just do a quick recap then. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so a quick recap is they've got 10% discount uh, on the tables that work with the Sweet 16 and the Capri, both on the old style and the new style insight table. That's valid until the end of this month, the 28th of February. We've got a 10% discount on the Cindy Needham stencils and on the Cindy Needham books. Um, those will be up online from 2 p.m. today. And you can do large quilts on a small stationary machine, and you can do little quilts, little quilts on a big frame. So come and see us if you're looking for a demonstration of the Handy Quilter machines. Don't forget to have a look online for our classes. I'll be launching the workshops coming up in May with both myself and Linda Jackson, and we'll be announcing the dates for our end of September workshops, our ambassador event, which will be coming up. We're very excited about that. We'll be announcing more details of those in the coming weeks. We will also be telling you more about the Pro Stitcher Lite and announcing more details of that for our Moxie and our Simply 16 customers and how you can get the conversion kit for that. And just to answer a final question from Joe, good question, yeah. Joe. If you have the Faf Power Quilter 16 table, the original table extensions do work with that as well. Very good point. Yeah, it's the same style of table. Absolutely. And if you've got any more questions, just pop them underneath and we'll answer them uh, as we can, if we can. So we look forward to seeing you next week for Facebook Live. We'll be back here as usual and we'll be working away. So we'll be coming out with new products and we'll be busy as bees as normal. Now we're well rested and we're glad to be back. It's great to have you here and we look forward to seeing you out and about and at the shows back here in the UK for the rest of the year. Okay, you take care everybody. All right, bye now. <laughs> <laughs>